Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Arise. We have Meowie joining us again, so you'll hear meowing. We have Luna that ran past her collar in the front yard. So there's lots going on today. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining me. I love having you here every week. Welcome anyone who's new to Arise. We talk about love and faith and hope and joy and parenting and all the things. And we have lots of dogs and animals and cats in the background. So welcome. I will go to the Lord in prayer and then we will get started. Father, thank you so much for this day. Jesus, we just, we give all of our burdens to you, God. We know that your word says to lay everything at your feet. You have given us life. You give us your word to follow as our roadmap. You lead us to righteousness when we trust in you and believe in you, God. And you give us salvation when we lay our lives down for you because you laid your life down for us when we repent and believe. We're so thankful for you and all that you have done for us, Lord. I pray that everyone here hears a word from you this morning. Thank you for being our light, our bread, our living water, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have Meowie at my feet again, knocking the camera. We're probably just gonna end up keeping him, but I need to take him to the vet and get him his shots and all that stuff. Okay guys, so I was thinking this week about so many people message me and they say that they feel lost or unfulfilled or wanna know what their life's purpose is. I think so many times we can be searching for something we, we search our whole lives for something to fulfill us and it's usually we fill it with things of this world and people wonder, you know, what is the meaning of life? What is my purpose here? What am I doing? What am I supposed to be doing? So I think we've all had that empty feeling at some point. I know I did. I, I know coasting through college, I, I didn't know really what I was going to do with my life. I didn't know what my purpose was. I had feelings of happiness, you know, fleeting happiness, but I didn't have true joy. I didn't have true joy until I had Jesus in my heart and that took until I was in my 30s. So I was searching online for people talking about the meaning of life and what is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? All of these articles came up, all of these articles and they were all psychological articles or psychology articles and one of them actually said the meaning of life is to be happy. <laughs> I don't know. The meaning of life is not to be happy. And then really, really far down on the page, I finally saw the word God but it was at the very bottom of the search. And all these other things were like, all of these things that you could do for yourself and it's all, it's all relying on yourself to fulfill yourself. And that's just not what we were created to do. So no wonder why people are so lost because we don't have our own strength to develop in ourselves our purpose for this life. That is something that God gives us when He knits us together in our mother's womb. He has a plan for all of us and we were created for such a time as this. So in order to find our purpose, we have to know first who created us and why. The Bible tells us in Genesis, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. You were created by the maker of the universe. You were knit together in your mother's womb for such a time as this. I don't know what your life situation is. I don't know if you come from a good home of two loving parents. I don't know if you were given up for adoption. I don't know if you were abandoned. I don't know if you were abused. I don't know if you were told that you were a mistake, but you were not a mistake to God. You have purpose, you have destiny, you have a part in His grand plan. And the sooner you realize that, the sooner you will believe that you have purpose and meaning in this life. He created you for such a time as this, for His glory. The sad part of the story is, is that we were all born into sin and we were all separated from God. That is what leaves us with this longing, with this hole in our heart. It's, it's a God-shaped hole that only He can fill. So you can try to stuff it with things of this world. You can try to stuff it with your husband or your wife to complete you. You can try to stuff it with your kids. You can try to stuff it with food, with alcohol, with drugs, with sex, with money, with status. You can try to stuff it with all those things, but it doesn't quite fit because there is a God-shaped hole in all of us and it leaves us longing for something. And we're longing for that relationship with Him. We're longing to be where we should be in heaven. You know, this is not our only home. This is not our only life. Heaven is our home and we are dual citizens. We are citizens of this world, but we are citizens of heaven. And 
Jesus is the key. Jesus is the path. He gives us His Word. His Word is a roadmap to our lives. It shows us how to live. It shows us how to love. It shows us what marriage means and how it, how it was created to be. It shows us how to treat our family and our children and widows and orphans. It shows us how to persevere through suffering and it gives us living hope. And it shows us most of all how to have a relationship with our Creator, how to repent and believe and be made right in the relationship with God, which is what we're all searching for. I asked Lincoln what the meaning of life was and why he thought we were here. And he said, God. And I said, okay, well, but what though? And he said, to do the mission that God has for us. And then I asked London the same thing. And her answer was to believe in Jesus and tell people about him. I did not have those answers at eight and 10 years old. I didn't. And I didn't have them at 25. I didn't have them at 30, but faith like a child. And in Matthew 18, three, it says, Jesus tells us, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus also says in John 10, 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus came so that we could have life. He gave His for us. And He wants us to have life and have it abundantly in this world. But that doesn't mean of the things of this world. That means have life in Him, have relationship in Him, have joy in Him, have peace in Him, have rest in Him, have salvation in Him. We are made full and complete by our relationship with Jesus. His hope, His Word sustains us through the trials and tribulations of this fallen world. He is our living water. He is our daily bread. He is our Savior. When we finally find what fills that God-shaped hole, it clicks. And we no longer have to wonder aimlessly, like, what is my purpose in this life? What am I doing? Yes, you'll wonder, like, what job should I do? Or you, what, you know, what career path should I take? And those are things that we take to God, and He reveals those things to us. And He walks us through those situations. So we will always have questions. We will always be longing and looking for answers to something. But when we go to our Creator, he fills us with what we need. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be made complete, equipped for every good work. The scripture is breathed out by God that we may be made complete, that we may be made whole and full again in our relationship with Jesus. I am more fulfilled than I've ever been in my entire life having a relationship with Jesus. Despite the pain that we've gone through, despite the trials of my life, despite questions of things that have happened in this world, I am so fulfilled and I am complete. And that is not something that my husband can give me. Granted, I love him. My kids, I love them. The things of this world, that will not make me complete. Only my relationship with Jesus does that for me and gives me the peace and the joy and the rest. The Lord gives us His Spirit. And when we repent and believe in Jesus, his Spirit resides in us, and that is powerful. That is so powerful. And when we have the Spirit in us, the fruit from that comes out, and we have the fruits of the Spirit. And in Galatians 5:22 uh, and 23, that tells us of the fruits of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of those things that help us to be made complete. I wanna encourage you guys this week and the rest of your lives, stop looking to this world to fulfill you. We've all seen Jerry Maguire, the you complete me line. People of the world don't complete you. Cat. People of the world don't complete you. Things of this world don't complete you. There is only one person, the triune God, who can fill that hole. Christ has set us free. Christ has set us free, and we are no longer a slave to the sins of this world, to the things of this world, which can leave us feeling hopeless and unfulfilled. Trust Him, lay it all at His feet, deny yourself and follow Him, and you will be made complete in His Word and through His life and His works and His death and resurrection. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. I will see you next time you are chosen, and I'm just so glad to, again, have you guys on this new channel. I appreciate you. I'll see you soon. Bye.